Hey everybody, Tire Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well and having a good week. So we're gonna pretty much just get in the brass stacks here because if you look over here to the right, look at that. We've been talking about it for almost a week now. Am I surprised by this? Not entirely, but definitely uh, not necessarily I would say sounding the alarm, but there are some key things that I'm picking up with this that do increase my concerns here with that and we're pretty much at this point going to be going into storm mode from this point uh, uh pending if uh, anything changes with this setup because if it doesn't we could have a big couple of days ahead of us in the middle of next week right to, at the end of this month here so let's take a deep dive in here and we'll start to look at some of these parameters We'll take a look at the 500 millibar maps here. Also, we do have uh, memberships here to anyone that might be interested in there. If you're a weather nerd and you want to take a look at the uh, whole analysis from uh, 300 millibars, the uh, top of the atmosphere all the way to the surface, we'll be doing that there this afternoon as well. So that being said here, let's begin to dissect this here because this this has the potential to be a very dangerous setup. Obviously, we're still pretty far out and a lot can change with this. But there are a couple things in particular that I've uh, noticed here. We'll go ahead and actually look at the six and seven day areas because I almost forgot to even show them. So here's day six right here. And we're mainly going to be focusing on the eastern half of Tornado Alley into the Midwest here. Uh, just outside of Kansas City through a lot of Missouri, central Missouri in particular, also Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma, and even heading into Illinois, we're going to be looking at the potential for severe weather and potentially significant severe weather. But the following day also has a slight risk and a very much larger area too. So we could be doing some streams for um, two days in a row here, and then also could be dealing with increasing severe weather potential and maybe even an outbreak, dare I say. Keep in mind, like I said, six to seven days out, a lot can change, and with these severe weather systems, there are a lot of little fail parameters that can go into it. One of which is actually mentioned here, although this may end up aiding it, but like I said, with it being so far out, it's not a guarantee. There's three words that I look for when it comes to severe weather events. Well, three words in particular that I like to look for when it comes to severe weather event. It's elevated mix layer. I can't really show it to you on the models right now, but usually this will end up coming off of the uh, Rocky Mountains here off to the west. So if we can get that moisture to mix around that elevated mix layer, with those lapse rates will usually steepen. You want steep lap ra lapse rates for severe weather. Of course, other factors come into play with that, but everything seems to mix along pretty well with the models here. And this is why I think they ended up pulling the trigger here and calling the uh, very rare day six and day seven slight risk here. But that's just basically a brief rundown of what the elevated mix layer is. I'll actually get into much further detail in a Weather Nerd 101 video, which will be down the line here. Hit that like button if you want to see if that if you want to see that in the near future. So that being said, as we continue to go forward here, this is our storm system that we've been talking about. Still looks incredibly strong early on. And it's really two different troughs here. Here's a trough to the south, one that, here's the one to the north, and this is the one that's gonna end up taking over, but we're gonna have a lot of energy left from this trough here. Kinda almost have a look of a trough ejection trying to occur, but I don't think it quite gets to that point. But look what we end up having here as we go from Tuesday into Wednesday here. We have two different areas right here. It's like almost a different point of intersection, so to speak, between these uh, two pieces of energy here. Just the wind energy here alone already kind of has my attention more than anything else. And then as we continue to go forward, as we go into the following day, which would be Wednesday, this is when the, I think the big day would happen. We could see multiple types of storm modes for both days, but I'm thinking Wednesday might be the biggest chance for a severe weather threat here. And keep in mind, this is just a Euro we're looking at, 
but even so i have my concerns i think tuesday night could be big as well so i'm kind of trying to figure out the timing still here but fact of the matter is there is something very potentially very big on the horizon here like i said still room for things to change here but if it doesn't change we could have a significant event on our hands here possibly as we continue to go forward here this is a look at the gfs the gfs is showing something very similar to the euro but the timing is a bit different the gfs is usually a little bit more reliable when it comes to severe weather i prefer the euro a little bit more when it comes to winter because usually the gfs is a little bit more aggressive with that heat and also moisture returns at times the euro tends to play it a little bit conservative and maybe sometimes will downplay things not saying that it's a terrible model but some models specialize in certain uh in uh, certain fields of weather better than others so to speak gfs does a little bit better with the uh, mid-range severe weather in my opinion and we kind of see that here here's that first storm system here and then here's that second one kind of falling in right after and the timing kind of matches up more with what i what i've been seeing here with severe weather and then on top of that this has been a little bit more consistent the euro has been kind of a little bit flip floppy with this as far as the uh, outcome here but either way across the board definitely looks like we could have a uh, big day here i do see potential for a mode of storms where we see a line in fact it's you can kind of see a little bit of a confluence and diffluence here going on which is also a telltale sign just based on the wind profiles alone and then as time goes on we may have to watch for a wintry event as well looks like that might be a little less likely but i also see the potential for a very large warm sector here too because you can see this ridge out ahead and we've been talking about that we've been harping on that a lot in the channel in recent days here so that's going to be something that we're going to have to keep an extra close eye on as well thankfully after this point here's another ridge that builds in so we get a little bit of a break and then we'll have to watch the weather pattern after this point to see what happens next but we'll get into that in another video that's not what we're concerned about right now obviously let's get into some of the other parameters here that are essential for severe weather the main four that we looked at and we kind of covered the first one which is the s which is uh which is shear the uh, acronym that we look for in severe weather is called slim it's shear lift and we got to actually cover two of those with those maps we were looking at we're going to jump all the way to that last letter m which is moisture and then we'll be able to from that moisture we'll be able to help pinpoint some of that instability here and here we go as we go forward you can already see out ahead of that storm system really good moisture return comes in from the gulf here especially towards the southern end of tornado alley in advance of that storm and then with that storm system bringing that cool dry air and behind it it's going to be it's going to create a nice little boundary right here as we get into the overnight hours it's going to make a little push up to the north here and keep in mind this is the euro the euro doesn't always have the best moisture returns in comparison to other models sometimes but we're still seeing some pretty sufficient model some uh, pretty sufficient returns here as we go from tuesday into wednesday it does kind of taper off a bit on wednesday here i'm not sure how how much i agree with that or not but even then it's a telltale sign that we could have something on our hands here and then as we go to the gfs watch the difference here if it'll get going there we go so as we continue to go forward look at that moisture return begin to pop up right ahead of that storm system look how far those 60 degree dew points get this is into tuesday evening here and we could be seeing a couple a uh, pretty large area of severe weather just on that day oops hit the space bar and I ended up going down but if we go to the following day that moisture return hold uh, hangs around and pretty much last throughout the entire day I do think that we could have a uh, variance in time here along uh, when it comes to the uh, Wednesday setup here depending on how quickly this trough progresses will determine the timing but we could be dealing with a Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening type event for the uh, day seven outlook as well. So 
timing is still variable but i definitely see a lot of signals that would kind of lean into that severe weather threat now here's where that ridge comes into play and this is where we start to get towards that last letter in the uh, slim acronym which is the i and the i is for instability usually you'll see a combination of different things kind of leading up to that together which would be often uh, temperatures dew points and then of course cape is usually a great measure of instability so we saw those moisture returns getting into the 60s which is more than sufficient enough for severe weather usually you can be in the mid 50s and kind of get away with that but with those surface temperatures that's going to be the uh, another key component for that and then of course there's other parameters as well but those we're just kind of keeping it basic here for now we could make like an hour-long video on some of the other parameters but if we continue to go forward here look at how we get into the 70s all the way into missouri here that warm sector is very alarming and then over here across let's say eastern oklahoma we're getting into the 70s we're getting into the 80s and even in parts of texas we're almost we're going to be pushing 90. so like i said with that warm sector in play and a stout storm system that's going to drag in cold air like this you can kind of see the contrast here getting the 70s over here and then over towards western parts of uh, illinois here we're dealing with 27 degrees so it's a pretty big drop off at a pretty rapid pace so that's also a telltale sign of just how much instability this storm system could potentially bring so we continue to go forward you see that same setup for tomorrow and like i said zero this is the less impressive model run let's go to gfs here so let's get to our time frame here you can already see that with that ridge that we were talking about pretty much a similar look this is sunday mid 80s across a large part of central texas and we'll eventually see this continue to push further to the north here and you can literally see that ascent of warm air right here that's crazy and then here's that storm system right here you can literally see the contrast between where that cold front's going to end up being then eventually this works its way to the north and look at that even into the iowa we're getting into the 70s and with that uh with that wide contrast right here that increases the concern even more as we continue to go forward here i'm really interested to see what the models later today and overnight are going to show and then as we go to the following day look at how that warm air vex further to the north here getting into the mid 70s even a few 80s over here so like i said concerns definitely increasing and rightfully so based off what we're seeing from the models here we've been seeing this for a while now so i'm not surprised by it but we're going to pretty much be making updates on this point here almost daily at this point maybe even twice a day depending on uh, how things continue to trend here but as we continue to go forward that's getting out of uh wednesday into thursday and we may even have a potential for maybe the uh, east coast here towards mid-atlantic maybe having a chance for some severe storms we'll have to keep an eye on that as well before this storm system heads out but across the board here I like I said I have my fair share of concerns here with this system here for for sure so last things we'll look at here before we go to see what our radar could look like even though we're almost a week away is going to be our instability actually we're going to be looking at our uh, convective available potential energy or as we usually call it cape we're going to look at different levels of the atmosphere the euro shows the uh mixed layer which shows all levels of the atmosphere and it's a good tool that i like to use i prefer that more than just looking at the surface but we're mainly just going to be looking for values above a thousand here and i i'm pretty sure we're going to see plenty of it and even in advance we can already see the uh, cape kind of build in here keep in mind it's not above a thousand at this point but when we get towards the evening there you go look at that we're getting up to 1200 1300 getting into 1500 and further off to the south we may even push a couple areas getting to 2000 then as we go towards the following day a little less instability available here like i said the euro is kind of working a little bit more against this than the uh, gfs is so as we continue to go forward here this is the gfs we're looking at the surface cape so this is basically the zero to one kilometer range a few thousand feet above our heads at maximum it's not showing all levels of the atmosphere 
which is honestly something I would rather prefer to have, but hey, it's what it is. So here is that GFS run again. You can already see that surface cape building. By the time we get into the afternoon, into the evening, a little bit less to work with than what I would like to see. There's a couple of different points where we're getting into that 800 plus range. But with the shear and the other parameters we have available, I do think that we can overcome that. Then also when it comes to CAPE itself, GFS does somewhat underplay this. The convective models, when we get in a closer range, I think will give us a better picture of what we could see. When we look at CAPE in the long range, it can be kind of tricky as well. But like I said, just seeing these points of interest this far out still is definitely a cause for concern here. Definitely uh, raising some eyebrows on this end for sure. And then of course we watch that move out and we do see a little bit of evidence of some uh, convective energy here possibly for these storms to use maybe on Thursday. So we'll, like I said, I'll be keeping an eye on this region as well. So last but not least, we'll go ahead and take a look at what the radar could look like. We're gonna just kind of jump right ahead here to this next storm system if we can. So here's the wintry side of that storm system. With that warm sector though, I do think we're gonna start to push or trend away from that a little bit. Maybe towards the back side of it, towards the uh, UP of Michigan, we could get some big time snow here. But with this pushing off to the Northeast in such a rapid manner, I do think that this will uh, kind of limit our winter weather activity here. And pretty much that verifies as well. But here is our setup going into Tuesday. We could see some discrete storms across Illinois, maybe into Missouri to start Tuesday evening. And then as we go forward here, you may see a linear mode begin to take shape here. It could be a QLCS as we go through Wednesday morning into the afternoon. This is just based off the Euro though. Then we could have some leftover showers and storms and maybe another, maybe a pot another potential bout of severe weather as we continue to go towards the uh, end of next week going to the gfs we're gonna try and see if we can get a little bit closer here so with the gfs this is looking towards the morning of the 27th for the eastern half of the u.s like i said it's pretty much a similar deal we're mainly going to see that uh, low push off to the north and east a little bit keep in mind this isn't a high res model but still we're seeing plenty of shower and storm activity over here and then as we continue to go forward, looks like the same thing across the board. A uh, MCS, maybe QLCS will start to develop. See a lot of potential for damaging winds, but the tornado threat is also there. By the time we get into tomorrow, we might take a look at some of the lower levels of the atmosphere as well. So, like I said, a lot we're going to be keeping track of in the days ahead. And then also, of course, as we look at Thursday, while I do think its stability will be more limited, I do think that there is a chance of maybe a little bit of severe weather. Depending on how much moisture is left over, we do have to still watch maybe the Great Lakes for some wintry weather. I think for the most part, it's going to remain as lake effect snow. And then maybe towards the uh, far northern reaches of the northeast, we'll maybe be looking at some uh, snowfall there, albeit most likely going to be brief snowfall at that. But that's pretty much all I got for this video. Might be a little bit, might have been a little bit longer than expected here, but but uh, the situation's starting to definitely uh, starting to definitely pick up here in regards to this this uh, storm system here. But appreciate you watching, especially if you watched the end. If you did, make sure you leave a like and a comment. Hit that share button as well. And if you're new around here, definitely consider subscribing. I almost urge you to because we're going to be doing coverage on this for a bit all the way up until the event itself so that being said take care have a good evening i'll see you tomorrow it's been tired metalhead weatherman have a good night